It is easy to get misled into thinking that because a brain is not like a computer, that a computer cannot think like a mind. But it is important to remember that a computer does not have to replicate every function of a brain to support a mind clone. In an analogous vein, consider that a bird is not like a plane, but both fly. The bird is vastly more complex than a Boeing 747, which has just over 6 million parts. Today, planes fly farther, higher, and faster than birds. On the other hand, planes can't stay aloft for months like Swiss or frigate birds. In thinking about this analogy, it is important to remember that for flying purposes, we only want planes to provide a portion of the functionality that a bird provides. There is no prospect of planes laying eggs, nesting in trees, or in the eaves of a house, or running on the fuel in the form of fish, worms, or insects. And there is no practical or efficiency value in an airplane doing any of these things. In other words, a plane does not have to replicate a bird in every way to support safe and comfortable flight. Hence, I think it is fair to conclude that birds are to flight as brains are to consciousness. The differences between brains and computers or between birds and planes beg the point. Most people's interest in planes is as a method to go from city to city safely, efficiently, reliably, and in as much comfort as an airline allows these days. Similarly, most of us are not the least bit interested in a computer that can self-organize itself gradually from birth to maturity. Our intention is to provide a computer with an analog of a human's mind, not the brain, in one fell swoop. We are interested in a computer that thinks and feels the same as a human original mind. Gerald Edelman assumes rather than deduces his conclusion because he assumes that consciousness is limited to brains. Whether or not brains are computers is not dispositive of whether or not consciousness can emerge from computation. Things that are mutually exclusive sets, such as, for argument's sake, brains and computers, can still give rise to phenomena that are common to both sets. For example, odd numbers and even numbers are mutually exclusive sets. We can imagine odd numbers to be brains and even numbers to be computers. Yet both can give rise to Fibonacci numbers, a series of numbers where the next number is found by adding up the two numbers before it, which can also be imagined as a metaphor for consciousness. Comparatively, triangles and squares are mutually exclusive sets, yet each may be combined to form rectangles. Edelman's error is to say that since he has seen the triangle of consciousness formed only from neurological squares, and since computers are triangles rather than squares, the rectangle of consciousness cannot be formed from triangles. He forgets that just as there are many ways to skin a cat and many ways for a thing to fly, there are also many ways to form the rectangle of consciousness.